What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Koi Charisma. I'm one half of Cold Coffee Culture, and you already know where we're operating, at the intersection of tech, culture, and dope shit. And in today's video, I'm giving you my final thoughts on J. Cole's The Off Season. Let's get to it. That's dope. I've been listening to J. Cole The Off Season for about a week now, and honestly, it gets better and better with every listen. Like, this is the most confident I heard J. Cole. This is the most braggadocious I heard J. Cole in the wild. It's the most precise J. Cole I've seen in a while. Like, he really hit this out of the park. Like, from the rollout to the actual album being, like, launched and actually being presented to the world. Like, I feel like he just checked all boxes. Like, there's really no weak spots on the whole overall experience of the album. Um, and I think the big difference from this album and K.O.D. is that it didn't have, like, a whole woke agenda to it you know like the cover art is just speaking to the j cole brand um the songs actually have like sprinkles of like what you would call wokeness or whatnot in the actual songs but it's not the primary focus of the album and i think when j cole does that the um actual album and him actually performs overall better now for me for me track one to track seven is the actual real meat of the project. Like every song gets better and better and better and it keeps building on top of each other. And like me going back and listening to the album really made me realize that like, yo, track one to seven is really, really good. Like they all meld together really good. They all flow together. And not to say that tracks eight through 12, like the other tracks are bad. They're not, they're really good songs. Actually, like some of the highlights of the album actually are on the second half of the project. It's just that track one through seven just mold together so well and it kind of builds upon each other. Each song keeps getting better and better. And with the with the climactic uh, Pride is a Devil song, and right after that, it just really switches gears to a more chill, laid back J. Cole um, I think that really helped the album because in the beginning you get like you get lost in those seven songs um, and you really just get a real good feel for the album. I feel like those that run really speaks to how good the album is and what the album actually is. Let's talk highlights of the actual album. For me, the highlights of the album are Amari, My Life, Pride is the Devil, Clothes and Punching the Clock. I feel like a lot of people like Amari just because of the beat and the story behind the actual, the beat, which is really dope. Cause I love rap lore or like a song having a good story attached to it. It kind of makes the song even better. Um, for me personally, my two favorite songs are My Life and Pride is the Devil. Uh, my Life is really good. I don't know who the guy is doing that chorus, but that chorus is just good. Like it's just, it's just amazing. Where does this fall in J. Cole's discography? This is a question that I have posed to myself listening to the album multiple times. And it's also a question I have seen floating around the internet. Where I think it falls now and where I think it will fall with time to come. Because this uh, project has to age. Um, it has to uh, see how it holds up over time to really see where it's cemented in his discography. Now, my first part answer is the noun part. Where does it fall? Um, I had it falling right below Born Center and which is like third place and we're talking about his um his actual albums uh with 24 2014 Forest Hill Drive being number one Born Center being number two I will put the off season at number three and I will put Sideline Story then KOD and then For Your Eyes Only in my personal order I think that is I think that's where it is currently right now I think over time, I don't think it will change much. I think the only thing that will change over time is that some people might have it edging out Born Center uh, at the most part, or it will just be like a 1A, 1B. Most people will probably flip-flop those two for two or three in his discography, and I wouldn't be mad at that. Uh, I feel like that might actually be where it would be because... Um, Born Center does have nostalgia on its side, um, and Off Season does not, to be honest, because um, it's not old yet. Like, it can't have nostalgia if the, the project has just came out. But I think that's where it's falling in his um, actual discography. 
in uh honestly in closing this project has no weak spots um i feel like it's consistently good throughout uh i'm happy with what i got from j cole uh good job dude just like honestly just good job like it's not a, it's not a bad album it's a really good fucking album i'm going to be listening to this with the months to come i feel like this is some i feel like this is a project that has a lot to chew on it's not going to be a real qu quick album. I feel like it's going to last a long time. But those are my final thoughts on J. Cole's The Off Season. See you soon. Talk to you sooner. Peace. That's dope.